We're going to be looking at some students today raiding a Wawa. It's almost Halloween, and I guess these guys couldn't handle uh, waiting for Halloween, so they had to just jump right into it. And so we're going to looking at uh, there was like a hundred students invading this Wawa as a young age 10. This was all orchestrated through a post on social media and they were taking selfies and trying to be trendy. They were stealing candy, dancing on shelves and doing other bizarre activities. Uh, they went out to the driveway and started jumping up and down on cars, making all kinds of problems out there. But that's, it was just crazy what was happening out there. Uh, why, why do they think this kind of behavior is okay? This reckless behavior. There's a definite, absolute lack of morality that's being taught to them by society, in the schools, and by their parents. This creates a destructive behavior, and it literally is destroying our businesses and economy. This has happened several times in the past month here in Philadelphia, and it's so dangerous. And we need to rally together to help stop students stealing randomly at any time they want. What can we do about this? How can we help create a greater future for our young people that will point them towards better decisions and a better life? You see, there's a major problem here. This happens because we live in a post-Judeo-Christian society. And what is a post-Judeo-Christian society? It is a society that has abandoned Judeo-Christian principles. What does that mean exactly? Well, I think that means that you don't have to be, quote, a Christian to believe in Judeo-Christian principles. Judeo-Christian principles is concepts of obeying law. And not directly just obeying law, but also the idea of Law is based upon our Constitution. Our Constitution is based upon the reference of what they, the writers and the legislation believe that our laws should be. And they get this information from different periods of cultural societies. Our country is based upon our Constitution 250 years ago. It was given to us from if the framework of the British ideas of law and the British ruled an empire for seven eight hundred years but that was given to them from the Roman Empire and law and the Romans develop a freedom of voting and Parliament and all those things and that was given to them from the Greek way of living and then the Greeks learned that from the P Medes and Persians and the Medes and Persians took note of the way that Hebrews lived their lives. And how did the Hebrews live their lives? They lived it based upon what is called the Ten Commandments. It's not just ten rules that they follow, but ten categories of law. These uh, categories of law, that shall not kill, that shall not steal. We actually had some of those laws in our laws today. And so, in a real quick way, you could say our law is based upon the Judeo-Christian philosophy of building law upon not only the empires before us, but the original empire that gave us law, the Judeo Empire. And when we ha when we forsake that, I'm not saying not going to church. I'm talking forsaking the idea of living uh, uh, lifestyles according to Judeo law, obeying law. When we forsake that, then you get the results of what we see today, a crumbling cultural society. See, it first starts with, you see, when we think about crumbling, this this is a fruit of what we see. These young people throwing all these things and raiding this. Well, this is a fruit of a tree that comes from the roots, and the roots is Judeo-Christian philosophy. But when we kill the roots, say there is no God, and say that life is like, we don't need these kind of laws. And that's what we're seeing in our judicial system today. We're seeing laws, you know, uh, we're seeing people, uh, judges, saying that we really don't need these laws. We can set the prisoner free. We can set the criminal free. You break your law, steal, it's okay, you can go. You you attempt to kill somebody, you didn't stab them, but you attempted to, okay, it's okay. 
you can go. Oh, you did shoot a gun, but you didn't know you were doing it? Oh, it's okay. You can go. We've forsaken laws. We're forsaking these things, and our judicial system's allowing that. And our judicial system's being taught that let's go against the opposite of Judeo-Christian philosophy. You see, our actions come from our thinking, and our thinking comes from our what is called philosophy, values that we like, values of our worldview, values of living. What we like is our philosophy. And our philosophy is dictated by our theology. What is your theology? Possibly you may have a no God exists theology. Well, that is your theology. Theology is the study of God. You believe in the study of no God if you're an atheist, which means that we don't really have a soul. We don't have a life of value of care we're all animals what's the big deal we're just doing what animals do and really that's what's happening in our culture today and we're seeing these young people committing great acts of violence and robberies and stealings and rioting and lootings in these blue states and blue cities why because there's a philosophy coming down of no god no judeo-christian philosophy no following law judicial systems letting out the prisoner Cops have their hands tied. We don't know how to control it. It's just running rampant. We're seeing a breakdown of civilization from the breakdown of our cultural ideas. How can we create a better future for them and for ourselves? We need to be involved in teaching young people and helping them make better decisions for themselves. That's what we need to be involved. Our position of helping these young people. What is your position? You need to carefully think about that. This reckless behavior cannot become our norm. We need to be able to stand up and speak the truth into the lives. And this is essential in this time and age. So how can we help? We need to learn to share the truth of God. Share it in these young people's lives. Hey, listen, we're taking questions today. If you have a question, please leave a question and uh, on our comments. Hit like, hit uh, subscribe on our YouTube channel. And uh, if you have a question, I'd like to take your question. I'd like to answer it for you. So if you have any questions about our topic today, please leave them in our comments below. If you have any thoughts on these ideas, hey, please share them as we discuss youth culture. So I'm going to look at uh, this video of Gary, uh, Officer Gary Miller. Gary, you got Miller. one of our gospel bracelets. Gary, can you show us your gospel bracelets? Yes, I can. Yes, hello. This is Streets of Gold. There you go. Security of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Black represents the sin, and green is uh, the grower. Yeah. When Jesus see me, he don't see sin. You know who he see? He see Jesus, huh? <laughs> Amen. You see, Gary has the right message. He's down there in Kensington, Philadelphia. He has the right message, helping to share the truth into people's lives. This message is very clear. Jesus doesn't see our sins, but forgives us and sees us and loves us as we are. That is so important as we face the reckless behavior of the world around us. God still loves us and wants us to turn to him and ask him into our lives. You know, we're super pumped about what's going on. And so, as we invite you to come and listen, ask questions, leave comments. We're super excited about our cultural, youth cultural update, cultural update, and what's going on. And we're here to give you an update on how our ministry is being effective in these young people's lives. Holiday that's coming up next. And uh, getting ready to hand out candy and all that fun. And listen, this is a great opportunity for believers to share the gospel with their friends. It's a great opportunity. Some people balk at this idea of Halloween. They say it's the devil's holiday. That's that's uh, it's cele it's the celebration of Satan. No, no, that, that there's no celebration of Satan going on because of all these things. And uh, you know, it's just like anything. It's just a cultural celebration. And uh, but we can re we can redeem this holiday and use it for the gospel. Consider how you and your family will celebrate Halloween this year. And uh, so I put together a quick presentation on should we celebrate Halloween? This is a complex question, a complex answer. It's not just like, oh, the Bible has something to say about Halloween. No, it's not in the Bible. 
doesn't say in the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not celebrate Halloween. It's crazy talk. What does it say? The Bible talks a lot about celebrations and talks a lot about how we as Christians should live our lives. And so the number one thing is we need to seek God's wisdom. God's wisdom on celebrating Halloween, other holidays, and understand the reasons why Christians either do celebrate Halloween or don't celebrate Halloween. It is Halloween the devil's holiday. Some say it's the devil's birthday. That's crazy. The devil wasn't born. God created the angels. And God created Lucifer, the devil. Uh, he wasn't a devil when he was first created. He was an angel when he was first created. And then he fell, as Isaiah chapter 14 tells us, that he fell like lightning to the ground. So is it a sin to celebrate Halloween? It's a good question. But does it, we're going to look at what the Bible says about it. So let's think about Ephesians chapter 5, verse 7 through 15. That the believer is to be not living in darkness, but living in light. The Bible talks about in Acts chapter 8, verse 9 through 24, that a magician was converted to Christianity. And magic arts were banned by Christianity in Acts 19, 18 through 21. The practice of magic arts was an idea that the Christians hated and stayed away from. So can Christians celebrate Halloween? Across the world, the month of October ushers in a new season of weather, pumpkin-themed foods, fall celebrations. October means the arrival of an often day of Halloween. And this is an outlet for many of costumes and creations and candy consumption. Oh, the candy consumption is huge. So Christian families question, should we be celebrating Halloween? Well, the answer, first of all, depends on God desires faithful obedience for you and your family. Christians, Halloween offers the opportunity to model faithfulness and obedience and decision-making. At the very least, Halloween provides a conversation start between you and your kids or a neighbor or even a coworker from there. Halloween presents an incredible opportunity to develop new relationships and share your faith. So as a parent, we need to study, pray, seek God's wisdom on the topic, follow the conviction of our own heart through the power of the Holy Spirit and the leading of the Holy Spirit, so that whatever your family decides, others might see Christ working through you as you make your decision whether to celebrate Halloween. You never know, because they may want to know more about Jesus Christ and his love for them. And so you are creating a bridge and an opportunity to share the gospel with them. So that's awesome. That's important. And so let's remember that Halloween is not something that we can get caught up in saying, all Christians who celebrate Halloween are on their way to hell. No, that's crazy. Let's think about the positive. Let's think about how we can honor God. Let's think how we can meet our neighbors. Let's think about how we can share the gospel. Let's not dwell on the origin of Halloween. Let us dwell on how we can use it in our culture. And for 2021, 22, how we can use it for the glory of God. Hey, Satan's had that practice long enough. Let's take that back and use it for the Lord Jesus. Amen. If you like our exposition on why should Christians celebrate Halloween, why don't you subscribe to our channel? We need subscribers. We'd love to have you subscribe. And if you'd like to know more about our ministry, check out in the description below. And you can go to our website and you can see what we're doing these days, how we're helping you. I just want to say thank you for watching. God bless you. Thank you. Talk to you soon. All right. Well, hey, we've been having fun sharing the gospel, talking about these things and you know, we can take the gospel to our neighbors and be a positive light in this dark holiday. So I'd just like to wrap up closing remarks as we wrap up our time here. I'd like to share one last update on our ministry. Take a look at the overview of our ministry and some of the ways God has worked in lives. And, and the Lord has been blessing and working in young people's lives and people's adults' lives. And we, we've been having different, you can go to our site to check out different videos. You can go to my website, youthfluential.com, and check out many different podcasts and uh, WordPress blogs and videos. And uh, we, we created an e-book, 25 Youth Outreaches That Will Radically Change Your Ministry. You want to check that out. You want to check out that book, e-book, and get that e-book down. And uh, we'll put the link down below where you can go to our website or get the free ebook so that's a free resource for youth leaders youth pastors pastors or leaders who feel called to serve young people 
and bring the gospel into their lives. Hey, listen, share this video with someone you know who could benefit from these awesome uh, videos that we're creating and these expositions. Listen, we have a, we have a buy me a coffee. And buy me a coffee is a program where you can go to buy me a coffee. You can click on the link down below in our description. And for one dollar, you can help us continue for our ministry to go forward and to help us reach young people with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, listen, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Hit the alarm bell so you can be kept up to date with all my future content. As always, comments and questions can be left below. And I hope to see you all next time on our cultural update videos and next time on our live podcast. Thank you. God bless you. Talk to you soon.